as you can see in front of me, I've got my radio, SWR meter, and a bunch of pipes and shit. So apparently we're doing some antenna design. Today we're going to be doing the J-Pole antenna, also known as the Zepp or Zeppelin antenna. That name was actually uh, comprised because this is what the Germans and the Nazis used on the ass end of Zeppelins back in World War II. Now, a J-Pole antenna is, well, looks like a big letter J. Now, this is actually a half-wave dipole. It's just kind of bent and contorted. Now, this side is actually half wavelength, and then this is one quarter wavelength, as well as this side is one quarter wavelength. Now, the gap between it, uh, you know, all of this, you know, with any antenna has to be mathematically calculated. Now, I'm going to focus mainly on the 440 megahertz ham radio band, primarily because a couple of episodes ago I went into how to modify FRS radios uh, to have an antenna jack, and which fall very close to the amateur radio uh, 70 centimeter band for 440 megahertz. Also, you know, a 2 meter J pole antenna would be quite large, close to uh, 6 feet or so tall, which I just can't fit in my framing of my living room. Okay. So in front of me, I've got a couple of J poles. I've got my SWR meter, my ham radio, and I've got my computer. We're going to go to the computer side real quick, and we'll do a little bit of explanation of actually how to calculate uh, the dimensions of a J-pole and get a little bit more understanding of how it works. Okay, by doing a quick Google search of J-pole antenna, we come to a, one of many websites. All, all websites will uh, be in the show notes, so check the forums for all of the URLs. Here are the calculations to actually design a J-pole antenna in general. Now, the long element denoted in this image as a is 705 divided by frequency in megahertz that will equal your feet. Now this is from uh, the tip to tip where I'm pointing with my cursor is actually half wave and then the rest of it will be full wave. So usually that's, that's close to a full wave. But uh, depending on your standing wave, wave, standing wave ratio and your feet point, that can differ. Now this second element here that's denoted as B. That is the secondary element, which is 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz to equal the feet. C is 23 divided by F in megahertz to equal your feet. And this is the, uh, the where you actually uh, place your feed point, your connector or your coax. This is the distance from this tiny little nubbin down here which is denoted as D. The D is the space between the long element and the short element, which is 22 divided by frequency in megahertz to equal the feet. If you scroll down in this page, it goes into a little bit more explanations where you can explicitly design your antenna with their online calculator. So let's say we wanted to do this for amateur radio 440 megahertz. We type in 440 and we calculate the antenna would be uh, 19.2 inches long, uh, it will be, uh, the, the short section is uh, 6 point through 6 inches, the feed point is 0 0.6 inches apart, and, or sorry, the 6, 0.6 inches above the actual spacing, which is 0 0.6 inches. This is a very good website, and it actually uh, designs J-poles very, very well. The next one to look at is actually called the Emergency Ladder Line J-Pole Antenna. This is a PDF file. I will actually link to the hosting website. Basically, this actually gives dimensions on how to design different ladder line J-Poles or twin lead J-Poles that are denoted for specific ham radio bands. No calculator here, just pre-built mathematical calculations. Now, I'll show you in a moment why these actually have a benefit and a drawback, but the main benefit is they don't take up much space and you can roll them up and put them into a very short space. You don't need any copper or metal pipe. The ladder line is very flexible. This website here goes through a relatively in-detailed process of how to actually build a 2 meter uh, J-pole, which pretty much goes through the same calculations that we showed on the, on the first website. Also, you know, explain it's compensating for using PVC connectors and T-fittings, which I'll show you in a moment, and explains how to actually sweat pipes together using, uh, uh, using a propane tank, flux, as well as uh, 
everyday Joe Schmo solder. I'll get into a little bit more about uh, sweating pipes together in a minute, but I'm not going to show you the in detailed process. It's pretty straightforward. Once you get a little bit of experience, you'll get the hang of it. All right, so by now you have an understanding that the J pole is actually an omnidirectional antenna. It's uh, half wave, relatively easy to construct depending on your materials. Now I chose copper pipe because the thicker the material, the more power output it can handle. So something like this can handle probably close to 100 watts of power output. If you use something very thin, which I'll get a close up in a moment of, you know, something like 16 gauge wire, I really wouldn't go over anything about 10 watts. Um, but if you're going to be using this on FRS radios, pretty much 20 gauge or 22 gauge copper wire, because FRS radios will not be going over, say, half a watt of power output. But either way, let me re- um, re-angle the camera and I'll give you a close-up shot of how I actually put these together and then we'll do a couple of SWR tests on these different J-poles. For this J-pole, which is tuned to about 460 megahertz, um, what I did was I pretty much just sweat the appropriate connectors together, compensating for the bend radius of the uh, T connector as well as the 90 degree angle elbow. I'm using a paddle mount and a connector, which is left over from our Wi-Fi series. And then I took some, uh, I think this is 16 gauge copper wire, and I coiled it around a few times, and then attached it to the feed point per the instructions of creating a J-pole antenna, and I put spiffy little end caps. I didn't actually solder these on, I didn't feel that this was a necessary step at this point, as these will not be put outdoors as of right now. Plus, if you actually want to adjust your SWR, uh, you can shave down the, uh, the ends and adjust your SWR. You can also adjust your SWR by actually moving this up and down the actual necks. Now the reason I, uh, oh, I also used a, um, what's called a pipe hanger. This is a copper strap used to uh, hold copper pipes to your ceiling. I wanted to use two of them, but I, it's really hard using two of them in a design like this. So. Basically, the idea of this was I was able to uh, move this entire section up and down until I got the SWR that I liked, and then I pretty much soldered it all in place. Now, I used the T connector, but this isn't 100% necessary. But, you know, the catch 20, I mean, you don't need to have any kind of length of antenna going in this general direction. Uh, this is just for mounting, so I pretty much have a spare piece of copper pipe. This will not affect the gain of the antenna whatsoever. That'll just fit in like so, and you can mount your J-pole antenna horizontally or vertically. Vertical is pretty much ideal. Now, uh, one thing I did want to mention though is that, you know, when you're, uh, when you're working with certain ham radio antennas, you know, things have a tendency of getting to be quite large, especially when you're dealing with uh, two meters and uh, six meter, 10 meter, et cetera, et cetera. So they've actually got these threaded fittings for copper pipe, which you'll be seeing me use on uh, on, on other antenna types that can thread together. Now this will actually make it so you can break your antenna down to be relatively portable instead of having one huge honky donkey dick of an antenna. Now if you are going to be designing this uh, antenna for something that's going to be excessively large and you want it to be something that you can either throw in the trunk of your car or inside of a backpack or a small bag, use these threaded adapters. Just remember that these threaded adapters will in elongate the, el the the, the size of the copper pipe. So you will have to go and cut the tips of your pipes down a little bit smaller. Your best bet is to actually sweat solder your connectors on where you like them and then cut your, uh, uh, thread them in, not as tight as you can, just by hand tightening it, and then cut it down to the exact size you need. But we're working with lower frequencies, so it's much more forgiving when it comes to being uh, off measurement. Now. Here's the ladder line, or what they call twin lead. It's literally just twin lead. Uh, what you need to do is, uh, per instructions, is first, you know, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this, because this is a bit, where am I on frame? Okay, now, according to the instructions, the first thing you need to do is actually solder and bridge the bottom over here. Now. Uh, a quarter inch on the four, you know, on the instructions, it says anything on the uh, the 440 megahertz band. Uh, you need to make a notch and strip away to the bare copper so we can have our feed point. Now you're not supposed to be using a connector like this. You're supposed to directly solder your coax in, but I didn't have anything that'll actually fit on my uh, on my SWR meter at the moment. Then 
X amount of inches up. On this case, it was five inches up. You need to actually break the copper away from the twin lead right here. So there's actually a one quarter inch notch that's just been completely ripped away. And then about 12 inches of ladder line or twin lead, depending on what your region calls it. To adjust the SWR, uh, what you can do is you can slowly nip away at the length of the end of this until you finally actually tune into the frequency that you want. This will work on damn near any frequency. To hang this antenna, you put a little hole right here in the tip and you hang it by non-conductive material like a nylon string, fishing line, just don't use copper wire. And you pretty much just hang the thing up like so, so it actually hangs in a straight line. And like I said, with these, with these ladder line J poles, They don't take up nearly as much space. I can fit this entire thing in my pocket, and then when I'm on site, unroll it, good to go. All right, first antenna I'm going to do an SWR test on is the copper J-pole. Now, uh, got my connector, I'm gonna plug this in. Now, what Ophidian failed to mention, unfortunately, in his uh, SWR segment is that SWR